Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel and welcome to bonus weather video number two for this week. And we're going to be talking about something called teleconnections today. And if you're a long-range forecast fanatic, you have doubt, uh, no doubt uh, heard this term before. And I'm going to take a look at three of the biggies and, uh, and then ask ourselves the question when it's all said and done, do they really tell us anything we didn't already know? So let's go on ahead and first of all take a look at the first of these three. And before I do that, I went to the AMS glossary, the American Meteorological Society glossary, and looked for the official definition of a teleconnection. So here it is. It's a linkage between weather changes occurring in wildly separated regions of the globe. So in other words, if you have something going on in this part of the world, then something else ends up happening in this part of the world. And it's basically a linkage between those two, that if you see this, then more than likely you're going to see this somewhere else. So here's the first of the three. This is called the Arctic Oscillation, and this is the positive phase, and we're taking a look at the 500 millibar heights, okay? So how high do you have to go up to reach 500 millibars? We use heights in the upper atmosphere. They're much like isobars in the, at the surface of the Earth in the fact that the wind blows basically parallel along those lines, and the tighter they are together, the faster the wind blows. So this is the positive phase, and in this type of situation, there are negative anomalies. In other words, the 500 millibar heights are much lower up near the North Pole than they normally are. And because of that, we end up having, for the most part, above normal heights through the eastern part of the United States. So the positive phase of the AO is usually not a good thing for winter weather lovers in North Carolina. Now, if we take a look at the negative phase, then it's a whole different ballgame. It's exactly the opposite, where you have above normal 500 millibar heights up in the North Pole area and the Arctic regions, and as a result, below normal heights across much of the United States. And so uh, if you ever talk to somebody who's a winter weather fanatic in the Carolinas and they're looking at these uh, indices, they always want to see a negative AO. Now, here is the European Ensemble forecast, and these are all the runs that have taken place since December 1st. The most recent run is right in here. So the, uh, let me go back here, the uh, NAO, or the AO, I'm sorry, uh, has been negative, like in the minus 1 to 2 range, and then it's become progressively more negative with time. It's down to about minus 4 now. It is forecast to gradually increase and get back to neutral or close to neutral by the end of uh, December, or at least the Christmas holiday. Now, so you might be thinking, well, then why is it not all that terribly cold? Because there are other anomalies that are competing against this, and we'll talk about that in a minute. This is the European Ensemble uh, upper air forecast for December 12th, about three days from now. And you can certainly see all of the above normal 500 millibar heights up in here and, and the below normal heights here and here. But in between, there's a problem. And this is why this competing influence that I'm going to talk about in a little bit is going to come into play. And uh, there is the forecast for Christmas. Now, the overall anomalies are not, not as strong, but you can still see the basic features of above normal heights up here and below normal heights underneath that. And so even though the AO is forecast to become more neutral, this is certainly a much more favorable pattern for cold in the United States than what we are seeing at the current time. All right, now let's go to the North American oscillation. And this is the positive phase where, again, we have much below normal 500 millibar heights across much of Canada, and that usually correlates to above average 500 millibar heights across the eastern United States. So again, winter weather lovers do not like a positive NAO. However, the negative NAO, you have blocking up here over uh, eastern Canada and over toward Greenland, and so usually that uh, diverts all of the cold air down into the United States, and as a result, we end up with below normal temperatures. Now, let's take a look at the forecast and the NAO2 is negative or has been negative all month and has gotten progressively more negative and it is forecast as just like the AO to become closer to neutral by the Christmas holidays but so we have two of the three big oscillations both wildly negative right now and yet 
we're not experiencing temperatures that are all that terribly cold. So what is the problem? <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm just going to review this again. Uh, this is the upper air forecast for the 12th and then the 24th. And again, you can see all the above normal heights up in here. And, uh, and unfortunately for winter weather lovers, they extend down into the eastern U.S. Okay, and there's the forecast for the 24th. You've already seen that. Now, this is the Pacific North American Oscillation, or the PNA, if you will. And this is the difference between the two. Now, I put in NEG up in the title right here, but this is really both of the phases. The positive phase has below normal 500 millibar heights in the eastern U.S. and North America, and ridging in the western part of North America and the United States. In fact, I have a colleague that I became friends with at Penn State, and he always used to say, and he loved the winter, he said, a ridge in the west is best, okay? So that's the uh, positive phase here, uh, and the negative phase of the PNA is exactly the opposite, and it is not favorable for cold in the east because what we have here is a trough in the west and a ridge in the east, okay? Now, the PNA, and here's the problem, it has been strongly negative so far this month, okay? So there's been troughiness in the western part of the United States. Now, it is forecast in general to become less negative, but it really never quite crosses that neutral line. A few of the earlier runs did, but the most recent ones are not doing that, okay? And here's the upper air pattern that illustrates this. We've had all this troughiness here in the western part of the United States, which has prevented <coughs> the jet stream from being diverted way up into western Canada and then plowing its way back down into the eastern United States. Now, by the time we get to around the Christmas holidays, yes, there is some ridging finally showing up here, uh, but it's mainly out toward Alaska. We'd prefer it to be in an axis right in here, and there are some negative height anomalies that are trying to get down into the United States. But instead of them being oriented right along the East Coast, they're a little bit farther west. And the positive height anomalies are not that far away from us. They get right back to the North Carolina coast. So with all this in mind, <coughs> the, thing, the two indices that, are, that we look at for cold and are actually in a cold state right now are going to be going the opposite direction. And the one that is negative for us right now is headed in a direction that is a little bit more favorable toward cold, but maybe not quite enough. And so I guess the bottom line here is that there is no guarantee that we are going to get into a truly wintry pattern here the second half of the month. It's still possible, but uh, these various indices are telling us to be very careful about guaranteeing anything. And the question I posed at the very beginning is this, is that do the indices really tell us anything we didn't know already? Well, I would say that it makes it a little bit easier for us to assess the pattern. In other words, when you look at an upper air map like this one here, then you can deduce from that more than likely, if you're experienced, as to what these various indices are. Are they positive or negative? And so the indices themselves are sort of a quick and dirty way to assess the pattern. And so if you look at the NAO is, is negative and the uh, AO is negative and the PNA is positive, then you can envision in your mind what that upper air pattern would look like. But I hear people say, oh, the NAO caused our, our cold winter. No, it didn't, okay? The NAO and all of these oscillations is just another way of assessing what is going on in the atmosphere. They don't cause anything. They simply tell us what the overall pattern is like, and I would say that the indices make it a little bit easier and quicker to diagnose what those patterns are than having to actually look at the upper air pattern itself. Okay, I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, we will be back... Uh, obviously on Monday with another daily weather update and a, uh, I'm sorry, we'll have another daily weather update later this afternoon and another bonus weather video on Tuesday. Uh, my, uh, for whatever reason, I've had brain fog today and you've probably been able to pick up on that uh, during this presentation, so I apologize for that. But anyway, a bonus weather video coming up uh, on Tuesday and another daily weather update coming up later this afternoon. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and we will talk to you soon. Take care.